Hi, my name is Ashley Ford Versipt. I'm an associate professor at Oklahoma State University. And if you're like me and participating in the AICHE annual meeting that is virtual, you're likely to have some amount of pre recorded plus oral presentation sessions for either you or students in your lab or on your team. And I wanted to go through a few tips that I learned for streamlining the process of working in iPosters. So the goal of this presentation is to give a few tips on how to save time using iPosters. So the goals are to use your normal workflow for making presentations or posters and to spend as little time as possible putting these materials into the iPosters format for the AICHE annual meeting. So you probably got a email that had a uh, annual 2020 next steps from the confex email address for the pre-recorded plus papers and in here there is a nice speaker guide link that tells you how you can make videos so if you're not familiar with making videos yet um, this is actually a good resource so highly recommend that is from the original um, email about pre-recorded plus papers or poster sessions, probably also sent to speakers who have live or um, pre-recorded sessions. Then there was a follow-up email that has the word iPoster login instructions in it. From there, you can click to your own URL for the editor. And after you log in, to the system, it's going to ask you for a username and password. If you've already created one, it it will show it. If you have others, you can choose from them. If you haven't yet put one together, you get to this set of templates. And my first reaction was, I'm not doing a poster. I'm doing an oral presentation. Why is it showing me posters? And that was a bit of a freak out moment. Um, but you can choose any of these and think about them as being boxes on a web page rather than a poster. So I am going to select here the four content boxes that are stacked. So I choose that option. And it looks like a poster template, but you can do various things of changing your colors, um, any kind of um, layout, logo, title things. But here are the time saving tools. You probably have created a presentation in PowerPoint or some other um, presentation editing software. You probably have put together a poster in a similar type of medium. When you are finished with it, save that as a PDF. That could be print as PDF, save as PDF, whatever format you normally do for saving files. Save it as a PDF. And then you'll need two um, things after this. You'll need to host it on a website. I highly recommend Google Drive. I tested this with both Dropbox, Google Drive. Um, Dropbox did not work well. It posted as a link rather than embedded text. If you um, have the ability to host on a separate website as a PDF, that could probably also work well, where a browser can read it as a PDF. But this example, I put PDF files into a Google Drive folder. So if I have created a Google Drive account, I can say file upload and upload the PDF I just created. When I'm on the PDF that I would like to share, I would like to make this um, available for other people. So I have right clicked on the name of PDF and I'm gonna get link. I want to get a link that anyone can view because I don't want the public to be able to edit my document, but to view. And I'm gonna copy that link. So I can go back to the um, iPosters platform and I can here, it asks me or tells me I can enter some stuff. This is the button that you care about. This one that if you hover over, it says insert video link. This is not the hyperlink. This is insert video link. I am not inserting a video. I am inserting my Google Drive link to my shared document. Now it shows my document here. My document could actually be a longer document, and but it views it. Um, I can, um, if I click, um, this is the, the view part when I preview this document, 
in this presentation, it becomes where viewers can click to make this larger, but they can also click this button and it will link out to the original Google Drive and they can view it at any resolution that is supported by the Google Drive. So that was no changes at all from a poster I had already created uh, for last year's annual meeting that my student had created. So that's, and you can insert a um, quick title. This is still in the previewer. Um, I can change and say my poster, all right? So if I had instead a presentation, presentation, <laughs> I could get similarly the um, links to any um, longer PDF document that I might have uh, saved in Google Drive. So let's do this with a longer document. This is actually just a paper of ours. I'm going to get the link again. I make sure it is viewer. Copy the link. I go back to my poster. I'm going to use the insert video link. Paste that in there. And you'll see that it just demonstrate or just reads it as a PDF with as many pages as needed. So that's my presentation file. If I click preview, this is what my, oh, I have too many browsers open. This is in this view mode. I can, this is what the users would see. They can scroll down, see that this is a whole presentation. In this case, it's a paper and you can view out and it will actually take you to the um, Google Drive reader of the document that then has um, this browser PDF viewer um, embedded in it. So that is how I would recommend uploading any presentation poster that you've already created. And then video content. So again, the speaker information has some nice info about how to make a video. Um, you'll Someone in the team will need a YouTube channel. When you have a YouTube video, you can upload a new video, which is in the upper right corner to create new content, upload the video, you upload the video file. And so I have many videos I've already been uploading from my course. And so I'm just gonna select um, one of those and get the link for that. And then on the poster template, wherever I want to put it. I'm going to say my video, insert video link, paste it. It will embed a YouTube video player there for my users. And then maybe I want to um, attach a link to my LinkedIn or an image of my team. I'm going to instead get the hyperlink for our paper that's associated. Um, and so in this platform, I'm going to again put it in as this link. It's just going to show up as a link this time. It's not going to show up as embedded content. So now I have clearly indicated to my viewers what is the content here. So a poster or a presentation or a video or a LinkedIn page or associated paper. When I am ready, I would save it. And you have to publish it by November 2nd, but you can update and save after that. Um, so in the preview mode, you'll be able to see that you can start to play the video. You can link out to get to the actual um, YouTube site. These will let you open them on the original site. This shows you a, a, a preview of the link. Um, mine was an achy journal paper from my lab, um, but you can link out to that um, external content. And so that is the set of tools that you need to quickly um, create posters, presentations in iPosters using your normal workflow for making the presentations of posters. Um, 
the suggested tips for making videos or any other way that you've been making videos and to spend as little as time possible putting these materials into the iPosters format. There is no need to take the content of your posters and paste it into one of those templates individually. Just put whatever editable software you normally use, save it as a PDF and embed it in this site rather than trying to recreate your posters in iPosters or to try to merge your presentations into this format. So spend as little time as possible putting your materials into this format so that you can have a more normal type of virtual experience um, or as normal as the virtual experience can be. I hope that you find this useful and good luck.